In Lesson 10, we're going to build a customer form to present our user with a nice friendly interface for adding and editing records. So far today, we've seen how to build a table, enter and edit data in a table, and we've created a couple queries. Now tables and queries are of course functional and they're necessary for most databases, but they're not very friendly to work with, especially if you don't know access. So in this lesson, we're going to see how to set up a couple of different types of forms. Now forms are used to work with data on the screen. Now forms look a lot better than working directly with tables or queries. That of course makes it easier for you to find information. A database that's easier to use is more efficient. Forms provide you with additional control and security over your database. You can control which fields your end users can see and which data they can edit. Are users allowed to add new records or delete records? All of these things can be controlled with forms. And later on in our advanced classes, you'll see how you can actually program stuff into your forms. So you can click on buttons and have them perform certain tasks and do all kinds of neat things. You can set up your forms and access to look like existing paper forms that you might have. This way, if your users are used to entering data in a specific type of paper form, you can make your on-screen form look just like it. This way, they know exactly what data goes in what fields. This makes it easier for your users to transition from an old paper system or even old software into a new access database. Data from multiple tables can be displayed together on one form. For example, you could show the contact history for each customer on the customer form in something called a subform. You could also show their last couple of orders in a subform on the main customer form. We'll talk about subforms in a future class. Forms can display summary information. If you have a form that shows a list of a customer's orders, you can put a total of those orders in the form footer. In today's class, I'm just going to show you how to set up some simple forms to get comfortable with form design. In the next class, Beginner Level 2, we're going to spend a lot more time developing forms from scratch. Keep in mind that building forms is really more of an art than a science. You can easily spend many, many hours making your forms look good. I know that I'm guilty of that. Changing around all the controls, where they go, what they look like, all of their colors. It's time consuming, but you really can build a nice looking form that makes your database look professional. It just takes practice. This is something that the more you do it, the better you'll get. So here's how you build a simple form. First, click on the table or query that you want to build the form on. I'll click on the customer T. Generally, you're going to build your forms off of a table. However, if you want to show a custom set of records, you can base them off of a query. We'll talk a lot more about this later. Now click on create and then over here you'll see the forms group, right? There's tables, queries, and here's the forms group. Now there are multiple ways to build forms and access. Now the easiest is just to click on the form button. Access will build the form for you. Say so here you go, there's your form. Doesn't give you any options, it just throws a form together. We'll see how this works in a few minutes. Next we have form design, which is you building the form from scratch. This is the way I prefer to build my forms. Unfortunately, form design is a little more advanced and we're going to cover that in the next level, level two. But you can build some pretty good forms without using this method. Form design lets you get in there and change every little aspect of the form but it does involve a lot more work. So again, we'll talk about that in beginner level two. Blank form creates the form for you and then you put the controls on it yourself. We'll see how this works in a future lesson. I don't generally use this one. The form wizard will build you a form after asking you some questions. I again tend not to use the form wizard, but I'll show it to you in a future lesson. Navigation forms let you build a special kind of form that is basically a menu for the rest of the database. You can click on buttons to jump to different places and do all kinds of things. We'll talk about navigation forms in a future class too. And finally, more forms has even more types of forms you can pick from. There's multiple items, data sheet view, split form. We'll talk about some of these today and some of them in future classes. 
So as you can see, there's a wide variety, different types of forms, different methods for building forms. For now, let's click on the simple form right here. Access does some stuff and presents you with a form. Like I said, that option just builds a form for you and says, here you go, here's your form. On the form, you'll see a header across the top here, it says Customer T. Then you'll see each one of the fields from your table down below here. There's Customer ID, First Name, Last Name, and so on. This is called a single form, because each screenful shows a single record, one at a time. Now each field has a label and a text box. The label tells you what field that is, last name for example. The text box has the value in it, Jones. Here's customer ID, the label, and the text box says 5. Now when Access builds the form for you, it places you in layout mode, where you can adjust the layout of the form by moving around the fields. You'll see up top here it says Form Layout Tools with three different tabs. There's Design, Arrange, and Format. On the Design tab, way over here on the left, you'll see the Views box. If you drop this down, it looks very similar to what we have with Tables and Queries. There's Form View, where you can actually edit the data, Layout View, which we're in now, where we can change the layout of the fields, and then Design View. Your end users will be working in form view all the time, where they can't change the design of the form or its layout, but they can type and edit data. For right now, we're going to stick with layout view and make some edits to the way these fields are laid out. Now, one of the things that I don't like about having Access build my form for me is that the designer doesn't exactly give you the proper amount of space for each one of these fields. Here you can see, for example, the first name field has this little tiny Susan in it, and the field is gigantic. I don't need to waste that much space. If I scroll down, for example, you can see postal code. A huge box is set aside for postal code. I don't need that much space either. So I want to resize some of these text boxes. So I'm going to click on the text box for first name, not the label, the text box. I'm going to move my mouse right over that bottom border so it turns into a double pointed arrow. Click and then drag it up. And notice it resizes the whole row. Phone number also over here gets resized. In layout view, the form is set up in rows and columns. Now you get more control over the placement of these fields when we start working with design view, and we'll talk about that in level two. But for today, just keep in mind that the form is set up in rows and columns. Now if you want to resize the column, if I don't need this much space horizontally, come right over here. So again, you get a double pointed arrow, click and drag, and that will make the column narrower. I'll do the same thing with this column, click and drag. And now I can get everything to fit nicely on one screen width. You can also resize the column widths where the labels are. For example, if you want to make this column wider, you can click and drag that. I don't, so we'll shorten that. So take a few minutes now and practice resizing these text boxes so they're at the height and width that you want. I'm going to click and drag. Click on it once to select it. Move your mouse over the bottom. Click and drag. Click, click, and drag. I'm going to scroll down click on state, click on the bottom, and drag it up. Okay, I'm happy with the way the form looks, so let's save it. I'll hit Control S or click on my floppy. I'm going to save this as my customer F, my customer form. Hit OK. Notice it appears over here in the navigation pane. I'm going to mention real quick, in some older versions of Access, even some of the original versions of Access 2013, there was a bug. I noticed this in some of the pre-release versions. When you saved an object that didn't appear right over here in the navigation pane right away, just click over here and hit F5 on your keyboard. The F5 is the refresh key. Sometimes the navigation pane just had to refresh. Now make sure you download the latest updates from Microsoft's website. 
that make sure you have any bug fixes that they've found. You want to make sure you keep your Microsoft Office up to date. I just figured I'd mention that bug because it really annoyed me when I first found it. Now notice my customer form is saved right there. It says Customer F. The tab up here shows the name of the form, Customer F. Why does this still say Customer T? Well, this is just a label. When you built the form, Access just put the name of the table that the form was based on in there. You can change this to whatever you want by simply clicking in here and editing it. Right? PC Resale Customers and then press enter. That's all. That's just a pretty label to go on top of the form. Now personally, I don't use these. I think they take up a lot of space. So I'm going to click on it and press delete on my keyboard. And now it's gone. And this little thing here, well that's just a picture. Again, delete. Now I just saved a whole bunch of space. And if you've got a small monitor or you've got a field with a lot of forms on it, you're going to want to save as much space as possible. I'll show you some ways over the next couple classes to make your forms look pretty, but for now I'm just trying to save some space. If you do want to put them back, right up here in the Design tab you'll see Logo, Title, and Date and Time. You can click on those buttons to put those things back here in the form header. Again, I never use them. Now that I'm happy with the way the form looks, I'm going to come over here and click on the Close button. Access asks me if I want to save changes to the design of the form, I'm going to say yes. Now my form is saved over here as Customer F. Let's open it back up. I'm going to double click on the Customer F and now I'm in Form View. Notice how I've got a blinking cursor right here. That means Access is ready to accept data. I'm no longer changing the design of the form, I'm changing the data in the form. And again, this is live data. What you change here gets saved in the table. Forms themselves do not have any data in them. Forms just display data from the table. Form view is where you want to have your users do all of their work. You don't want them to ever leave forms. So your end users will be coming in here to make changes, to add new records, to look up data, and so on. Now to move between records, use the navigation buttons. This goes to the next record. Now I'm on record 2, 3, 4, and so on this button goes to the previous record. This button goes to the first record. This button goes to the last record. And this guy right here goes to a blank new record so you can add new data. So now I can click on the first name field and start typing in somebody new, right? New tab guy tab ABC Corp tab and so on. Remember the pencil over here indicates this is a dirty record that has not been saved yet. The record will be saved as soon as you move off of it or close the form. Now you have 12 records. If you want to delete a record, click on this big tall button over here. That's called the record selector because you use it to select a record. Then press the delete key on your keyboard. It says you're about to delete one record. Are you sure? If you click yes, you can't undo it. I'll say yes, and now that record is gone. If I move back a record, now it says 11 of 11. Now you'll find a familiar set of buttons up here, Sort and Filter. This works with any of these fields. For example, if you want to sort by last name, click in the last name field, and then Sort Ascending. Now the records are sorted in ascending order. So if you scroll through them this way, they'll be sorted. I'll remove the sort. There are filter buttons up here. You can also apply a filter in the form by selecting some data, for example New York, right clicking on it, and then scroll down here and you'll see equals New York does not equal New York. We'll talk a lot more about these different types of advanced filters, but just know they're on the right click menu. So I can pick equals New York and now I've filtered my data set. You can see it says one of four. I've only got four customers from New York filtered. You can turn off the filter by simply clicking here and that will turn off the filter. There are other buttons up here, the refresh button, save, spell checker, find and replace. We'll talk about a lot of these buttons in the next level. For now let's close this form, come back to the navigation pane. 
I want to quickly show you how to create two more types of forms that are very handy. Click on Customer T, then Create, come over to the Forms section, drop down More Forms, and then pick Multiple Items. This is a Multiple Items form, and it looks like a big spreadsheet. Again, the rows are very tall, and Access puts you in Layout View to start, so I'm going to resize one of these rows, because they're too big. And there you can see all of your different customer records. In fact, let's make this a little bit more narrow. This one too, just click and resize. This is a multiple items form. You can scroll up and down. If you want to give your user a list of customers, you can show them this form. In database terminology, this is called a continuous form because the records show continuously one after the other. We're going to spend a lot more time building continuous forms in the next couple of classes. One of the things you can do is make it so you can pick a certain customer and then click a button to open up that customer's record and see the single form for just that customer. For now, I'm just going to close this form without saving it. Save changes, no. I just wanted to quickly show you how to build that form because everyone always asks me how to do that. Another handy form which is kind of the combination of both of those other forms. Click on Create, More Forms, and then Split Form. This shows you a list of all the customers down below, and up top you can see the single form. I'm going to resize these as well also. It's very similar to what we saw earlier, but you can switch between the different records by clicking down here. Again, that's called a split form, and I'm going to close that again without saving. We'll talk more about split forms later. I just wanted to give you a good sample of the many different kinds of forms you can build and access. Again, over the next couple of classes, we're going to spend a lot of time on form design. For today, I just want you to see how you can get in here, build a quick form, enter and edit data, and change the layout of the form design. Want to make changes, just come over here, drop this down, and go to Layout View. Now you can click, resize the columns, and then save your changes, and close the form. So that, in a nutshell, is how you build a simple customer form.